Well, my friends, the time is here as Google just dropped the next part of Android 16 with beta 4 officially rolling out today, right on time after that little teaser the Android developer Twitter account gave us the other day. At this point, we are as close as ever to the final release and there is a decent bit to talk about. So real quick, let me give you a full, complete rundown on what beta 4 is all about and discuss what it means as we head towards the public final release. And of course, if you appreciate staying up to date with all things Google and Android, definitely consider consider subscribing to the 9to5Google YouTube channel as that's what we love talking about and we have a lot more coverage like this coming your way. That said, Android 16 Beta 4 is freshly installed on our devices and it's a significant update but maybe not in the way that you would expect with a ton of new features. The reason this is a big deal is because Google is calling this the quote near final build focused on stability, bug fixes, and getting everything polished for the final release. That said, there are a few new items spotted in this update that you should know about and I wanted to share with you real quick. For one, long pressing on the home screen now gives you a new app list option that will open the app drawer with no transition animation, which is a bit strange. This is another useful or quick way to enter the app drawer, but it does feel redundant due to the fact that you can use the swipe up or three button nav bar to get to the same place. Also, as I mentioned, it does feel unfinished without any kind of transitional animation too. Moving on, there is now a new try demo tab in the gesture navigation settings that gives you a little tutorial on how to use gesture navigation. In the past, it wasn't available after initial setup, so this is nice for people that want to learn how to use navigation gestures since it is now the best way to use Android at this point. The demo teaches you each move individually so you can practice it a few times and get it right. There is now a new toggle to turn on predictive back animations in the developer options, and with this toggle enabled, it will force apps to use predictive back animations. It's not yet consistent despite being enabled by default, but should help with the experience on third-party apps. Following the beta 3 update that added the close option in the recents menu, there are now two new toggles when long pressing the app icon in the recents menu, that being the screenshots option for taking screenshots of course, and select for copy and pasting images slash text. Not a huge change by any means, but is another way to access these options if need be. And finally, the artwork in the notification media player is now darker, and at least to me, makes for better visibility. It also applies to the lock screen as well, where it could help reduce reduce power use on OLED screens, just something nice to know. It is also worth mentioning we are on the latest April security patch, which includes fixes for fingerprint recognition, camera stability improvements, and various UI bugs. So if you do decide to run the latest beta, you will at least be on the latest security measures until the full release. Lastly, I'm happy to report we do have support for all Pixel devices from the 6 to the 9 series, including the newly released Pixel 9a. With that, you do get some features that aren't available in the current stable release for this device like the clock timer widget and the new modes implementation that were rolled out in a previous Pixel drop. Because the Pixel 9a launched without QPR2 pre-installed, the Android 16 beta is the only way to get these features until the next QPR release, which should be the stable Android 16 launch. Personally, I think this is great for owners of the Pixel 9a as it means you can still try out the latest software. I'd say it's important too as the Pixel 9a uses a modified Tensor G4 chip and because of that, there may be some unforeseen issues that need to be addressed as early as possible before the full Android release anyways, I'm glad to see the Pixel 9a made the cut for beta 4. So we get all of this on top of the new user facing items we've seen added over the past few months, most notably the live updates feature, which is a new class of notifications for ongoing things like rideshare pickups or food delivery. We got a preview of how that works via the Easter egg back in Android 16 beta 3, where you can play a little mini game to demo these new notifications. Definitely worth trying out if you haven't already. Then there's the battery health page, which gives you a decent overview of capacity degradation, battery tips, and charging settings. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely a lot more going on. I'd say over 20 plus changes if I had to put a number on it, but much of this seems to be under the hood changes for developers this time around. What's strange though, is that there are a handful of other items rumored for Android 16 that we literally haven't heard anything concrete about at all in these betas. Things like that rumored redesigned notifications panel, potential lock screen customization with weather effects or shapes, that updated custom clock engine for tweaking fonts and colors, or custom icon shapes. To me, it's just weird to have these leaks floating around with no sign of them yet. 
Personally, if any of those big major UI changes are coming at all, I have to guess that it's going to be in the Android 16 QPR1 update, maybe landing sometime around September, perhaps alongside or just after the Pixel 10 launch. We already know Google confirmed lock screen widgets for phones are coming in that update, which is a huge request from the Android community. And honestly, if there's any merit to those leaks about the split panel or icon shapes that I mentioned earlier, QPR1 feels like the perfect time to finally release those big UI changes. If you think about it, the Pixel 10 would be out or just about to launch, so they could kind of ship those features alongside the new hardware to make a bigger impact. Plus, the timing just makes sense too, since the main Android 16 release was pushed up so much earlier this year by about five months. I just really think they didn't have enough time to implement some of the big sweeping visual changes people were expecting based on those early finds, which is why I find this update so backend heavy. As for when we can expect the full version of Android 16, it's still up in the air right now, but it is a great aspect to speculate about. Google's official timeline puts the stable release in Q2 2025, which means any time between now and the end of June. I will say there is a chance we might get another update as Google lists the possibility of a May preview release, but they don't explicitly call it beta 5, so maybe it's just a small update to iron out any last second kinks, or they could potentially go straight from beta 4 to the stable release. Personally, I think a release around Google I.O. seems most likely, at least in my opinion, as it happens in late May, aligning with Google's timeline. And also, launching the stable version of Android 16 during such a big event gives a huge opportunity to bring that additional fun factor to the event. So needless to say, I'm excited to see what happens with this final release. And there you have it, my friend, pretty much everything you need to know about Android 16 Beta 4 and what we can likely expect from here on out. It's definitely a significant update as we get closer to the final version of Android 16. And while it isn't packed with a ton of new features this time around, it's really important for making sure we have a smooth and stable launch for the full release, hopefully within the upcoming months. With that said, what do you think about the Android 16 beta so far? Are you happy with the changes we've seen? Are you running it on your main device? And if so, how are things going for you? Leave a comment and let us know down below as myself and the Android community would love to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.